Hey, what's up? It's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're going to compare the Apple Watch Series 3 versus the Apple Watch Series 5. There are two different Apple Watches that are currently available and there's a gap in the middle with the Apple Watch 4. I made a video about the 4 versus the 5 and it's been a great video. People have enjoyed it. So the 4 is still available, just not directly from Apple. So if you're considering maybe just going from a, uh, maybe you have a 3 already or a 2 and you, and you don't necessarily want to jump all the way to a 5, you can get the 4 still while supplies last at most retailers that are still selling them. So you'll want to check out that video video. But if you're trying to decide between the three and the five, which are the versions that are still available right now, there are a lot of things to consider and I'm going to go through all of the differences in this video. Now in researching for this video, I found it hard to find like just a really good list of differences between the two watches. There are the obvious differences, which some of those things we're going to touch on, but there are some differences under the hood that may have you thinking, well, maybe it is worth spending the extra money on the Apple Watch 5. Uh, but the Apple Watch 3 is priced really well and it's a direct competitor to a lot of other fitness devices out there such as the Fitbit Versa, which I compared the Apple Watch 3 to a Fitbit Versa 2 in another video, so you'll want to check that out as well. Lots of good reasons to subscribe to State of Tech here. I love comparisons. I like putting up technology against each other and seeing which one provides the most value for the money and also just which is the better option all around. So let's dive into this comparison between the Apple Watch 5 and the Apple Watch 3. I have the Apple Watch 3 on me right now as I've been using the Apple Watch 3 just to kind of see how it feels in comparison to the Apple Watch 5, which which I've been using since the day it was released. So the Apple Watch 3 is still just a great option. I mean, most people understand that from year to year, there aren't really any huge jumps in technology with Apple. I don't necessarily think that Apple believes that everybody should go out and buy a new device every year. Uh, they try to make it so that every few years, I think we are enticed enough to make a new purchase. And so that's why I think this video is important. If you are on an Apple Watch 2, or maybe you're thinking about jumping into an Apple Watch and you just don't know if there's enough value in buying the latest and greatest, this video is gonna help you out a lot. So let's jump into those reasons right now. So the first one is that the Apple Watch 5 has both a 40 millimeter and 44 millimeter size, whereas the Apple Watch 3 has a 40 and a 38 millimeter. Now the watches are uniquely pretty close to the same size uh, as far as the watch itself in both of those sizes, but you're getting a lot more screen obviously with the Apple Watch 5. Now the Apple Watch 5 has an always on display, which has had a little bit of criticism lately in sucking down the battery life. Personally, I like the always on display, but the always on display does always have what you were recently looking at underneath it. And so if it's a text message or something like that, and then it, the always on display is on top of that, sometimes it's kind of a weird experience. There are times when I will just flat out turn off the always on display altogether. The Apple Watch 3 doesn't have that always on display, so you you always are constantly having to tilt your watch up and look at it. And if you have tilt to wake for Siri, which I just did, I tilted to wake and Siri came on as if I'm going to talk to Siri. Sometimes it's annoying because you really just wanted to see the time and now Siri is wondering what you want. So the always on display kind of negates that situation there and uh, being that you don't always have to like crank your watch up to your face so that you can get it to wake up. You can see the time from any angle with an always on display. Now the Apple Watch 3 is a tad thicker than the Apple Watch 5. Combine that with the smaller overall viewable display display on the Apple Watch 3 and I feel like there's a lot more there physically and it's giving you a lot less for you to look at in exchange. So the Apple Watch 5 has a second generation heart rate monitor that also adds the ability to take a single lead ECG, which is super important for those of you who are really interested in your overall heart health, especially as we get older, that information and having access to it becomes very important. So the first generation heart rate monitor that's in the Apple Watch 3 still does a good job, but it's just not as fast and as feature packed as the new one. Now the Apple Watch 5 has a built-in compass, which makes 
the direction navigation process much better and much more accurate when you're using turn-by-turn -turn navigation on your watch. And it also is more accurate for those situations when you are tracking an outdoor run or a walk or a bike ride using either the built-in workout apps on the watch or a third-party app like Strava or RunKeeper. Those apps utilize all of the different sensors and to map out your path and record the path that you're on. And so that's gonna be a much better process process with the compass as well as the GPS. Um, and then also just being able to look at a compass and figure out what direction you're going and having that be true uh, so that you know exactly what direction you're going is a neat feature to have. So the Apple Watch 3 doesn't have fall detection. The way that fall detection works is that when the Apple Watch detects something which it feels like is a fall, the SOS screen comes up and you're actually able to put it in SOS mode and send out a notification immediately so that you can get help. The Apple Watch 3 has SOS notification, but you have to manually go into that. It doesn't have the auto fall detection. Now, the Apple Watch 5 has the latest processor technology with Apple's S5 chip, whereas the Apple Watch Series 3 has the S3 chip. The differences there is that now they've moved into a 64-bit architecture, and then of course over the years that chip has gotten faster, and uh, both with its processing and its graphics ability. So the apps are going to run a bit faster, things are going to load faster, there's going to be less lagginess on the Watch 5, but the Series 3 still is pretty fast, even considering it's a few years old now. Now, I totally forgot about this one and that it's the decibel meter. This one is awesome because it can tell you when things are getting a little too loud and unsafe. So you can see things are loud, it notifies, and then it kind of goes back to a normal level. And so this is nice, especially for those of you who work in loud environments. You can also set this as a home screen widget here as well by going and tapping and changing it down to noise and then it's always available there for you on your screen updating live. Now the Apple Watch 5 has the W3 chip which brings together several different technologies for connectivity such as Bluetooth. So the Apple Watch 5 has Bluetooth 5.0 versus the Apple Watch 3 that has Bluetooth 4.2. And with that W3 chip, the Apple Watch does different things like connect to AirPods. Uh, of course the Apple Watch 3 does that as well, but the latest and greatest in connectivity technology is packaged together in that W3 chip where the Apple Watch Series 3 has a W2 chip which is still good and still provides most of the same functionality. It's just older technology. Now, one very noticeable difference is when you use the crown on an Apple Watch 5, it is a different feeling experience. There's a little bit bigger of a crown there, and it has haptic feedback versus the Apple Watch 3 that doesn't have really any feedback, and the crown is very tiny, making it a little bit more challenging to use. Personally, I definitely like the experience of the crown on the Apple Watch 5 over the Apple Watch 3. If you're into different colors and finishes, the Apple Watch 5 is definitely your option as it comes in four different metallics that the Apple Watch case is made out of and a lot of different color finishes to match versus the Apple Watch Series 3 which currently now is only available in aluminum and comes in two different case finishes. To add to that the Apple Watch 5 has some higher end editions such as the Apple Watch Hermes edition whereas the Apple Watch Series 3 it can still use all the same straps so they haven't changed anything with the Apple Watch strap sizing it still fits in their universal for older Apple Watches versus newer Apple Watches, but out of the box, the options that you're gonna get from Apple are gonna be much higher end for the Apple Watch Series 5, and they're more standard for the Apple Watch Series 3. Now, both Apple Watches come with a strict GPS version or a GPS and cellular version, but the Apple Watch 5 comes with a international emergency call option, which means that even when you're in a country where you don't have cellular coverage with your Apple Watch cellular edition, Edition, you're going to be able to make an emergency call to an emergency service using your Apple Watch in many countries versus where that's only going to work in the country that you reside in uh, or a country that your wireless provider has service in that your cellular edition is connected to. Obviously on the GPS versions of these devices that don't have cellular, you're not getting that calling feature at all. Now on the Apple Watch 5 and 3, they both have accelerometers, but the accelerometer of the Apple Watch 5 actually measures double the G-forces at 32 G-forces, whereas the Apple Watch 3 is at 16 G-forces. The Apple Watch 5 has a 50% louder speaker than the Apple Watch Series 3. 
The Apple Watch 5 has a 32 gigabyte storage option where the Apple Watch Series 3 has a 16 gigabyte storage if you have the cellular option and an eight gigabyte storage for the GPS only option. Now the back of the case on these watches are a bit different as well. On the Apple Watch Series 5, you have a ceramic and sapphire crystal back that covers pretty much the entirety of the back of the case. Whereas on the Apple Watch Series 3, just the center of the cellular edition has that backing and the non-cellular GPS version just has a ceramic center. Going back to talking about the display, the display on the Apple Watch Series 5 is 30% larger and covers a lot more of the display, despite the fact that the watch seems to be pretty close to the same size. On top of that, the display on the Apple Watch Series 5 uses an LTPO OLED Retina display versus just the standard OLED Retina display on the Apple Watch Series 3. That LTPO allows the Apple Watch Series 5 with its always on display to go into a lower power state of display so that that always on display doesn't completely drain your battery life. The Apple Watch 5 also has some unique watch faces that are specific to the Apple Watch 5 that also got watch faces that were on the Apple Watch 4. Some of those Apple Watch faces are available on the Watch Series 3, but not all of them. And of course, the biggest difference of all is the price. The Apple Watch Series 3 currently starts at $199, whereas the Apple Watch Series 5 starts out at $399. And of course, the versions of the Apple Watch will change the price, where the cellular edition of the Apple Watch Series 3 is $100 more, and the cellular edition of the Apple Watch Series 5 starts out at $100 more. And of course, the additional finishes available for the Apple Watch 5 can also drive the price up as well. Now let's talk about things that are exactly Exactly the same, such as the fact that both devices come in a GPS only or a GPS plus cellular model. The GPS plus cellular model allows you to attach a cellular wireless plan to your watch so that you can make and receive phone calls, text messages, and get notifications without your phone being present. If you use a service that allows for a number sync, you can actually leave your phone at home and still get phone calls and text messages and respond to them on your Apple Watch even without your phone being present. The next thing is that both watches are water resistant up to 50 meters. As I already mentioned, both watches have GPS, which means turn-by-turn -turn navigation is going to work whether you're on a 3 or a 5. Apple Pay is also present on both devices, so you can do the tap to pay on merchants that support Apple Pay. Both watches also have the emergency SOS, so when you push down the button on the side, you get that SOS mode and you can swipe to activate it. The only difference with the Apple Watch 5, as I mentioned earlier, is that if you have the cellular edition, you can do that internationally. Both watches have speakers and mic for making and receiving phone calls, listening to notifications, talking to Siri, and all that good stuff. And last but not least, both watches get Watch OS 6 and have the App Store, so all the latest and greatest coming to the Apple Watch is available on both of these watches. All right, so I hope that that helped you better understand the differences between these two watches. Uh, both are great options. It just really depends on whether or not the newest features of the Apple Watch 5 are super important to you. Uh, maybe this video is also helping you understand whether or not upgrading from a version 3 to a version 5 is worth it. It really comes down to those little things that I mentioned, uh, all of these things added up really are a lot. There's a lot of differences there. But if those features and differences aren't in, of any big use to you, then it doesn't really matter. And it might make more sense for you to stick around and wait for the next version of the Apple Watch. But if you're considering switching to an Apple Watch from something else or making this your first Apple Watch purchase, hopefully this video helped you determine whether or not the version 3 or the version 5 is the best fit for you. So let me know down in the comment section below if you have any questions questions. I definitely love talking to all of you down there, hearing other questions that you might have, and even just hearing why you use Apple Watches and what you would use it for. So let's talk down in the comment section. If this video helped you out, give me a thumbs up, and I hope that you subscribe to the channel here so you could be notified when I put out new videos. I have a couple of Apple Watch specific videos coming out soon that are on the topics of apps and also just being overall productive with your Apple Watch. So I hope that you subscribe so that you can get notified when those videos come out. But that's going to do it for today, so thanks so much for being here, and I hope to see you back in the next one. Take care.